Hi, Easy here. Welcome to a build showcase for the 3.13 Ritual League. This is my solo cell found starter build that I hastily put together about 10 minutes before the league actually started because I didn't keep up with the patch notes. Basically, we are an Elementalist Ignite build and we're taking advantage of the new changes made to the Elementalist Ascendancy. But let's go ahead and do a map real quick. This is a tier 3 geode. I literally just hit maps like 30 minutes ago. Oh, that's really cool. What the hell? Okay, okay, new changes. All right, I've never seen that before. All right, anyways, um, we're using Penis Brand right now. We have a lot of options with the skills that we can use. Um, mainly, I would say between Divine Ire and Penance Brand, but I opted to go for a Penance Brand build because I think it'll be safer for the League mechanics and the, um, the Echoes of the Atlas arena style fighting. You know, being shoved into a small arena with 10 different elite mobs, bosses, doing all their crazy shenanigans. And playing a channeling build is a little bit scuffed in my opinion, so I'd rather not. But yeah, so Penance Brand Ignite uh, currently uh, only works because of the changes that were made to the Elementalist Ascendancy. Previously, if you want to do a lightning based um, lightning damage based ignite uh, such as divine ire you would have to use a stormfire ring which is a pretty rare drop running um, shaper maps and it's a level 80 requirement which means you can't use it while you're leveling you can't use it while you're mapping you can only use it after you've leveled up um, quite a bit before you actually uh, use the build that you're trying you, you set out to do in the first place and that's a huge turnoff for a lot of people. So hopefully this change makes it so that it's a, it feels more accessible, especially for newer users who often don't even get to maps in the first place. But yeah, the change that's been made is that Elementalist now can ignite with any damage and any hit. So it doesn't matter what you hit them with, you always ignite. The damage profile of ignite itself is still fire. So you will need to have fire resistance, but you can ignite it with any damage type, meaning you can even ignite it with chaos damage if you really feel inclined. So the reason why I'm using Penance Brand is because it has a huge amount of ailment damage scaling, uh, much like uh, Divine Ire. Both of them have over a thousand percent um, ailment damage scaling on their uh, skill gem. So as long as you have the opportunity to like let it sit and build up, in the case of Divine Iron, like channel up to 20 stages. Uh, in the case of Penance Brand, just let it incubate on the enemy for 20 energy. Um, it'll blow and then just burn the enemy with a huge ignite for uh, the duration of the ignite. So as you can see, um, the boss was pretty quick. Mop, uh, mapping is pretty decent with brand recall uh, i'm not using swift brand at the moment because i needed more damage early on with you know just a four link but um, i think swift brand might be a good mapping alternative um, that you might swap out for bossing but overall the play style is very smooth i'm also using the new hydrosphere as you can see uh, um, basically you play bowling with the hydrosphere you just move it around um, pressing a button and it might not be appealing to some people who don't want to press that many buttons but it is an extremely good utility skill that I think replaces uh, Orb of Storms completely and even Storm Brand uh, for builds like mine where I'm using a brand uh, which means I don't really want to use Storm Brand I think uh, it's been really cool I'm not sure if it's like 100% worth it but, ooh, Val Portal? Well, very interesting. Anyways, uh, but overall, I think it's a really good addition to the game. I almost died. <clears throat> uh, as for other things that are going on um, within like this build starter, uh, started starting build, I've tried to make it so that um, it doesn't require any kind of specific item. Um, I think the one item that I might want the most is an Eye of Malice. 
currently we have no really good way of applying um, fire exposure because we can't use wave of conviction because that requires us to do fire damage which doesn't align with elemental equilibrium which I'll explain later uh, and we can't use scorching ray because obviously scorching ray is casting and I don't want to cast like set down and channel uh, we'll take this uh, is that all the rituals? I have one more left. Uh, so that leaves us with very few options for actually applying the elemental, uh, sorry, uh, fire exposure to enemies in a, in a consistent manner. So Eye of Malice uh, is probably the best option to do that as it allows us to apply um, exposure very quickly. Uh, fire exposure on hit. So outside of that, I think everything else can just be rares. Uh, you might think like, oh, you need Primordial Chain, you're still playing Elementalist. But I don't think it's going to be that important um, until you start min-maxing. And even then, I don't, I'm don't. i not sure if it's actually worth uh, the necklace slot. Because there's other things that you can get. Especially in Solo Cell Bound. I don't plan on using Primordial Chains. So that's one thing. But this uh, Ignite should hopefully be strong enough to carry us without any gear into yellow maps and then once we start getting some decent currency and we have some bases to work with um we can hopefully oh this would have been nice uh hopefully get a really good okay 109 life um <laughs> i got distracted uh hopefully we can get a decent um weapon to help even out the damage that's required uh, for red maps but uh, with that uh, a quick mapping showcase let's go over the skill tree real quick um, and discuss some of the interactions that's going on the change number one change to make the ascendancy is shaper of flames this makes it so that any hit and any damage type will ignite guaranteed no questions asked this is really nice for lightning builds specifically because it allows us to bypass having to get uh, storm fire at level 80 uh, and it allows us to ignite with lightning damage right off the bat at level 33 whenever you hit the um, labyrinth and get this ascendancy point. This means that you can use elemental equilibrium which gives us negative uh, 50% 50, uh, 50 uh, fire damage penetration uh, if you hit with lightning and we, since we're doing lightning damage we, we always have this active. One thing you have to watch out for is making sure that you don't have any additional fire damage coming from other sources, such as uh, this node right here, Divine Fury, which gives us physical as fire. We don't want that at all. And with something like added fire damage on a ring or something, uh, we just want to make sure that's not there so that the elemental equilibrium always gives us 50% fire penetration. Another really cool thing, by going lightning, we can take advantage of big shocks. Um, which will be Shaper of Storms. Shaper of Storms makes sure that we are always um, shocking with any damage type. So it doesn't matter if we're hitting with lightning, but the last line makes sure that um, we get more lightning effectiveness, lightning ailment effectiveness whenever we hit with lightning damage. So we have a baseline of 15%, 25% more effect. We can also get increased effectiveness with um, things, uh, this Breath of Lightning nodes. And even like maybe static blows, but I'm not sure if I want a path just for that. Um, as well as Ash, Frost, and Storm maybe. Since it's just clean three points. Um, but yeah, this is an extremely strong Ascendancy node, I think, which is much stronger than Mastermind of Discord. And stronger than Bastion of Elements. Because we don't have a lot of sources of um, increased enemy damage taken. So it's, it's just a straight up more multiplier for us. The other uh, set of nodes that I would recommend for second and third ascendancies uh, is the Golem tree, Golem path. Because uh, mainly for the elemental ailments uh, immunity. I think elemental ailment immunity is pretty much a cheat, key, like a cheat code for a lot of um, newer players uh, because the way that majority players, more experienced players avoid it is with flasks. 
But a lot of newer players, uh, I don't know what kind of flask they're holding, but they're certainly not, you know, elemental element friendly. Um, they're not used to that kind of stuff. So this is really, really good for newer players. And even for veterans, I think having elemental element immunity frees up your flask slots for so much more options than just um, all utility flasks. Uh, if you have specific unique flasks that are really important, you know, it'd be really nice to add it in. But yeah, I think this path is pretty much mandatory if you're running an elemental list, unless you're running some kind of niche build. Um, but yeah, I, I would always take these. A good quality of life they added is the Leisure Primordial. Your summon golems are resummoned four seconds after being killed. This means that uh, all these golems that, that are running around, all four of these guys, at the current moment, if they die, if one of them dies, um, they're gonna get resummoned four seconds later. And if you've ever played Elementalist before this change was made, you know how freaking annoying these guys can be in high tier maps. They die left and right, you have to resummon them, you have to constantly keep them up, you have to babysit them, and it can be quite annoying, especially for bosses like um, Shaper, uh, Cyrus, where you really want the, the stats and the elemental elements, elemental element immunity that these golems provide because they have to be up for you to have that benefit. Uh, I used to use things like um, trigger socketed skills on the helm uh, with the focus so that I can just press uh, the focus button and all four of them spawn. That was a really nice way of handling it, but that also makes sure that your helm slot is uh, it's a rare, so we can't use Eye of Malice. Uh, so hopefully this change makes it so that these guys aren't such headaches when you go um, higher into the map tiers. <clears throat> As for the rest of the skill tree, there's nothing really special going on. Um, just a bit of uh, fire damage scaling here, a bit of fire damage scaling here, a little bit of damage here. Uh, outside of that, everything is just health. You just grab health here, you just grab health here, health here, health down here. Um, I grab call to arms for a more defensive setup for Enduring Cry. Uh, obviously, you want to grab Rune Binder, and uh, the Divine Judgment tree over here is very, very efficient. Um, once again, you don't want to grab this one, Divine Fury, because we don't want the extra fire damage, nor do we want the conversion. But yeah, this is a really uh, straightforward tree. There's nothing much going on except for just grabbing health. Let's talk about uh, the gear real quick. Um, as I mentioned earlier, uh, I'm, I wanted to have a build that doesn't require any gear, and here we are. Uh, I have a 28% fire damage over time multiplier wand that I picked up uh, very, very early. So I've been using this. Uh, hopefully I can get a better one, but I don't really see it happening for a long time. I'm using a ring that I got from Ritual League as you can see, this is a really nice ring. Um, has life, has good elemental resistances, has chaos resistance on top of it. It's just really nice. Here's uh, a glove that I just randomly crafted with essence for the life uh, because I needed sockets. Here's a chest piece. Really nice life, you know, decent mediocre uh, lightning resistance and fire resistance. That's probably a quick one that I, I want to replace. Here's a helm. 99 life. Uh, good resistances. Uh, here's a belt. You know, good life, good resistances. Here's a shoe. Good life, good resistance, decent movement speed. Uh, these are all from the Ritual League. I literally just look at it and I'm like, what the heck? That's a good item. And here we are. Uh, other slots are just random items that I found off the ground. So nothing too special. Flasks were running uh, quartz for the phasing which is, uh, I think, really important this week, especially. Uh, Basalt Flask for the physical damage reduction along with the Chaos Column. I think our current uh, physical damage reduction, let's see, 13%, and then if you pop the Flask, it's at 28%. Um, once we have the Endurance Charges from Enduring Cry, I think it's also, um, I think like just additional 10, 10% more. So we have a pretty good amount of physical damage reduction currently. I think we will push that a little bit higher with uh, later down the line. 
Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's, let's see, well, uh, sorry, we're on flask. Yeah. Uh, we have mana flask. Um, I'm just using this at the moment to, until I know what to do with my mana, uh, life flask with bleeding immunity and, uh, quicksilver. I couldn't roll adrenaline, unfortunately. Uh, as for the gems, the most important one is penance brand, fist to lightning, Deadly Elements and Ignite Pro Lift. Uh, if you have a three link, you want to run Penance, Fist to Lightning, and Ignite Pro Lift, and then add Deadly Elements, and then you want to add Unbound Elements, and then for the six link, or you want to, you can use Swift Brand a little bit earlier if you're if you're really sick of the playstyle of having to constantly brand recall, and you just want to press brands everywhere, you can use Swift Brand. But I think um, opting for a six damage link uh, in the form of like Swift Affliction might be better, so we'll have to see. Uh, depending on how it feels with more cast speed, because having more cast speed scales the um, speed at which the energy of Penance Brand stacks. The, on the other side, we have Hydrosphere. I'll talk about this skill in just a second. With Hex Touch and Flammability, which makes us, which allows us to apply um, Ignites very, or sorry, uh, allows us to shred more fire resistance. And then we also have combustion support. If you remember, we ignite with every single damage type. So Hydrosphere, even if it doesn't have any um, fire damage, is gonna be able to ignite. And the way ignite works is you can stack as many ignites you want, that's just only the highest one is gonna take effect. So even if we ignite with this Hydrosphere skill, um, the ignite that's applied by Hydrosphere is not gonna do much except with combustion support, it now shreds fire resistance. So overall we have, um, these aren't, remember these aren't level 20 gems. These are literally level, like what, 17 and seven. We have um, basically 20 or 50% uh, from hydrosphere alone. We have 50% from elemental equilibrium. And hopefully later down the line, we'll have an additional um, 10 to 15% from the Eye of Malice Fire Exposure. So we have a pretty substantial amount of elemental resistance shreds without much investment into uh, like gear, just from gems. On the other side for utility, we have um, Flame Dash uh, with Arcane Surge. We have the Golems, Lightning, Chaos, Flame, and Stone. So Flame, or sorry, uh, Stone and Chaos gives us life regen and Physical re uh, physical damage reduction, and then flame and lightning gives us cast speed and damage, which is really nice. And these get uh, these buff effects are extremely extremely strong uh, because of the elementalist and the golem uh, notable. Because we're running call to arms, we're also running enduring cry. What will probably happen is I'll put enduring cry, second wind, arcane surge, and flame dash, and then put the golem somewhere else. Uh, and then get like malevolence and brand recall with empower so that it has a lower cooldown if I want to use um, brand recall. But yeah, there's a lot of things you can do. As you can see, I am not filling out all my um, gem slots either. So hopefully that's something that we can change in the future. As for Hydrosphere, uh, real quick, Hydrosphere is really cool. I showed it earlier. Uh, it's like a bowling ball that you just throw around everywhere. Um, I feel like Miley Cyrus, uh, but one th cool thing that happens is it hits enemies as it crosses. So it means that when you drag this across the map, you can hit a lot of enemies that you otherwise wouldn't hit with a skill like Orb of Storms or um, Stormbrand, which makes application of uh, utility, utility stuff like maybe power, power crit a uh, power charge on crit. Uh, let me just put this crit chance on this. Yeah, it's like five percent. Not not too bad. Um, power charge on crit. Things like hex touch, like I'm using right now. Things like elemental equilibrium. Um, all of those will get, or sorry, elemental overload. Right, elemental overload. All of those will get proc pre at a pretty decent rate. Um, I think this is a really neat skill. Uh, I'm gonna keep using it and give you guys feedback on how it feels later down the line when we go bossing. Anyways, hopefully you guys enjoyed the introduction 
to the build that I'm going to be running for a good while. Um, hopefully I can get all of the end game bosses down with this build, but hopefully it's been a good showcase and I'll see you guys in the next video.